Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be uh, hopefully finishing off uh, the animation portion of our code. So we, we finished off the last what we need to do in the fade animation class. So now what I want you to do is I want you to open up paint, okay? And I already got this done, but what I want you to do is start a new project and resize the canvas to one by one, one by one pixel. The reason why we want to make it small is because uh, it's because this it's, it's it's completely obvious that whenever you load in something that is uh, the smaller the image is the the less amount of space it takes right so small the image the better it is the easier it is to load into X and A and uh, the less space it takes up while you're running your program right. So uh, that's why we want to make it as small as possible. So we're going to make this uh, box one by one. And you can increase it to any size you want and color it the black color. Now you want to save it to your computer anywhere. And then what you want to do is you want to come over here. Right. And you want to come over here and you want to say add existing item. And for me it's over here. Save it over here. So fade and we want to load that in okay so we've loaded in our fade animation so what we want to do now is we want to go to our screen manager and we need to do some things so what we need to do is we need to create our fade animation instance and we need to have a fade texture so we're gonna say texture 2d and fade texture Oh, what am I talking? What am I doing? Okay, anyways. So what we want to do is actually well, yeah, we could do it like this, but uh, we'll initialize it in the initialize method. So we'll say that fade is equal to new fade animation, and yeah. So right here we're gonna say fade texture is equal to content dot load texture 2d and I named it fade so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say fade dot load content and we have our content for our image is our fade texture and our string is empty and our position is gonna be vector 2 0 okay so one thing that we have to do in our animation CS class is you know for our properties we didn't set any properties for the scale so basically our scale is gonna have to be uh, the width or the height of the screen right because it's the image is only one it's only one pixel so we have to scale it to be able to fill the whole screen so so yeah, public float scale and we'll say set scale equal to value okay so we got that there so what we're gonna do is right after oh screen manager dot cs so right after we load the content we're gonna do save fade scales equal to and we'll have the uh, we'll make it equal to the largest dimension so it doesn't matter whether um it doesn't matter whether it's larger than the screen we just want to make sure that it is wide enough and long enough to fit over the whole screen so if the width is higher than the height of the screen then set it to the width and if the height is larger than the width of the screen then set it to dimensions dot y okay so we set our scale and we got everything set so what, what i want to do now is we want to create a new region and we'll call it private methods i guess and end region and within there we're going to have a private void and we're going to call it transition okay so this is only going to activate if transitions equal to true and uh we're going to have game time and you know what we don't even really have to have this in there yeah we'll get rid of that and we'll put it in the update method so what we're going to do is this so in the transition we're going to update we're going to call fade.update and then we got to do a number of different things okay so what we're going to do is we're going to say that if fade.alpha is equal to 0.0, .0 I know equal to 
and fade dot timer is equal to 1.0 because that's our default time or we'll just say if fade uh, is equal to uh, fade dot default time I guess no we can't even check for our default time so we'll just set to 0 0.f uh, then we want to do something and we're gonna have an else if fade dot alpha is equal to 0, 0.0 then we want to uh, set transition equals false and we want to set the field the fade is active to false okay so ignore all of this right now uh, oh fade dot time dot total seconds okay so right here uh, this was gonna go on so uh, it'll make more sense if we go to our add screen uh, method but before we even do that I noticed something before I started this tutorial we want to go to animation dot cs and then the draw in the draw method we need to say the, the color times alpha right and same for the text as well if we don't do that then we won't get the alpha effect that we want okay uh, so let's go back to screen manager dot h I mean I mean dot cs sorry and uh, we're gonna go to our add screen method okay so in our add screen method we're gonna set our transition equal to true uh, we're gonna set our new screen to that. We're gonna say our fade dot is active is equal to true. Uh, we're gonna set our fade dot alpha equal to 1.0 and our fade dot uh, start. Now what's our starting time? Uh, I don't remember what it's called. Activate value. Yes. So our fade dot activate value is going to be equal to uh, 1.0. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut all this and we're going to paste it within here. Okay, so now let's go back to our ad screen because I, I know I rushed through that and I want you guys to understand every aspect of the code. So we said transition equal to true. Uh, that's our Boolean variable that lets us know that we are transitioning. Okay. We're going to set our new screen equal to screen like we had before. So remember, in our fade animation, no, no animation can happen unless um, is active is equal to true. So we set it to true. So we set the default alpha, sorry, not 1.0. It should be 0, 0.0. So why is it 0, 0.0? Okay, so whenever something, when, if alpha is equal to 1.0, then that means it's opaque, which means it is uh, not transparent, right? That means we're fully showing the object. And if something is 0, 0.0, uh, therefore the object is fully transparent. We want our black image to be fully transparent as first, so then it's not covering, it's not, covering the whole screen and then we slowly uh, show the uh, black image so then it covers the screen in black and darkness or whatever so that's fading that's fading and then it will fade back out it's fading in then fades out okay so our alpha set to zero and be, since our when our alpha set to zero remember in fade animation uh, we overrided the alpha and therefore our increase is going to be set to true so therefore it's going to increase, increase until it hits this activate value, and then therefore it's going to uh, go on with the rest of the program. So uh, what we need to do here is we need to change this to new screen. So we're saying that it, when it updates, it's going uh, alpha is going to be 0, 0.0. Then it's going to increase the alpha, so uh, none of these are going to be true at first, right? Because uh, I, when it, by the time it reaches the statement, alpha won't be zero anymore. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to increase until alpha is equal to one. And if our timer, uh, so it's basically saying that if our timer is equal to one and our fade alpha is equal to one, then we activate this. The reason why we have this extra statement right here is because we don't want to be able, we don't want to run this statement more than once. So we add this in there so then it only runs it once. So once it reaches this statement, it does all the screen transitioning stuff that we, we had in the previous tutorial. So nothing new there. Okay. So once this happens, then and all this stuff happens in the fade animation, then uh, it's going to start decreasing and it's going to head towards zero again. So if fade and uh, the alpha is equal to zero, then we're going to we're going to set transition equal to false, and we're going to set fade is active equal to false, and the transition is therefore over. So to test to see if this actually works, uh, hopefully we get no errors. Uh, we're going to in our update. We're going to say that if not transition, then we update. 
and we're gonna have an else and we're gonna say transition the reason why we do this is because most likely we're not gonna want to update the screen while we're transitioning screens uh, you might want to so you might want to like add in some things to adapt to it but most likely you don't want to update the screen while you're transitioning and right here we're just gonna say that if transition then we're gonna do fade dot draw and the reason why we want to draw when we're fading is we don't want to clear the screen when we're fading we want to fade out what's on the screen uh, so let's run this program and hopefully it works correctly as we expect it to so we have our splash screen here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna press our Z key it's gonna fade out and it fades back in with the new screen and when I click enter it fades out and fades into the new screen so there we just finished our fade animation and I hope you enjoyed uh, the f the last uh, four video these four videos on learning how to do fade animation so I'm not sure what I'm going to be teaching next tutorial but I hope you enjoyed this one thanks for watching and bye